1920, when she took her older brother and younger sister and left Poland behind. She died at age 65 in 1974. Her parents and siblings who remained in Poland were dead by 1945. I wake up early so I can take half hour showers each morning. My relatives lasted three minutes in the showers before they collapsed in a heap of bodies. Eyes burned red, shaved naked and alone. They suffocated, air confiscated, replaced by gas, invaded their noses and closed their throats. They found pieces of fingernails broken and bloodied, stuck in the concrete walls like the claws of some chained beast aching to be unleashed. These were men, women, and children guilty only of their beliefs. My history is a past filled with gas and ash from the ovens. My history is a past with spiritual leaders forced to take a pass on their religion or be slaughtered by the dozens. A history without any real choices, with enemies who use death to silence voices. My history is last breaths amid violent noises. My history is the Crusades. Glorified raids of prisoners freed so they could rape and pillage their way across Europe's villages, slaughtering my people in their wake. My history is Bogdan Himmelnicki, and though most don't know his name outside the Ukraine, he is a hero there, with his face appearing on the $5 note and a statue in the main square immortalizing him as a saint to this day. Himmelnicki slaughtered over 100,000 Jews beginning in the 1640s, the worst mass killing of Jews pre-1933. My history is a story of defiant survival and the finest survivors who overcame being mired in the viral hatred in the name of everything sacred long after they'd been forsaken. Long after humanity passed with the first burst of propaganda hurled. Long after human decency vanished with the first creaking crash of the concentration camp bound cattle cars. My story is the love of a mother forced to smother her newborn baby child. Because sometimes the sacrifice of one child is the price one pays to save the other 29 who hide in a 7 by 5 foot bunker while Germans patrol outside. I look through the archives. Photos of bodies amassed in mass graves, slaughtered by the Nazis, buried alive, stacked like trash. The proof is in the missing flesh, barely covering protruding bones. And you still deny this happened? Moshe Bitterman, Joseph Cohen, Daniel Ehrenfest, Avram Fabian, Yako Fuchs, Isra Valenza, Ernst Harney, Sipius Bucky, Sarah Kirsch, Jamaka, Frieda Lishin, Ishvin Lichter, Jersey Prapper, Heskey Proper, Moshe Zuckerman, Hirsch Bockenhauser, age three. Those 15 names were people, children sent to their graves. They represent one one millionth of one percent of the 1.5 million children killed in the Holocaust. 0.00001% you deny and still we survive. Their memory is the blood pulsing through my veins every time I pick up my pen to write. The Nazis made soap out of the fat of our people, lampshades out of our skins, paperweights out of our skulls, and still we survive. How many have said they will wipe us from the map and still we live on, still we survive, still we fight, and still we hold on to our lives because it is all we know. We march on for those who are no longer with us. We are King David, Samson, Barco, Bahana, Senesh, and the fighters of the Warsaw Ghetto. We are Jew, Yud, Yud, and Yehudim. We are few, yet we are mighty. We are survivors. So the next time some ignorant, anti-Semitic prick says Jews are all the same, you say damn right, they are all survivors. Oh, MG! Oh, MG!